So the integrated bracelet watch and the dive watch are very popular among collectors. Uh, and that's the reason why a lot of micro brands come out with integrated bracelet watches and dive watches. Today I have sort of a cross between the two. It's an integrated bracelet dive watch. Now this is not the first time it's been done. However, I think it's one of the first that I have seen from a micro brand. Now major brands have done this in the past because they are expensive to make and they're hard to make. Because how do you make something that's integrated and also have uh, the capability of diving? You want to keep it sort of in that design. And it's not that easy. Not as easy as you might think it would be. So here it is, D1 Milano. Uh, it comes in the D1 Milano packaging, outer cardboard box. Uh, inside is leatherette. You get uh, information on the watch here, warranty information. It's just in a little folder. Uh, and that's just really it. That's all that comes with the watch. And here is the watch. You can see it's a stainless steel integrated bracelet watch. It's on a rubber strap. This gets a bluish gray dial. Now, it's kind of a theme of the watch. You get blue and gray uh, theming throughout the watch. This has a blue gray dial and then it has sort of a dark gray black inner rotating uh, bezel which has a little bit of color on it. You have obviously white but then you also have red for the first 15 minutes which looks really good. The dial itself is sort of like a pebbled or a sand dial but it's a very subtle sand dial matte finish and this is in a blue gray color. You get a little bit of a blue color on there on the second hand which is like an aqua blue or not really a baby blue, I would say it's an aqua blue color. You get a crown at the 10 o'clock, that operates the inner rotating bezel, and then you have a crown at the four o'clock, where you also have the date at the four o'clock, which is color matched to the dial. Um, and I really like what they did here, because normally when you have an inner rotating bezel, the crown usually ends up at the three o'clock, um, and what they've done is they've put it in line, so you're getting a, a crown at 10 o'clock and a crown at four o'clock, uh, it gives it a little bit of symmetry, I think. I do like the crown at 3 o'clock. I think that looks good too, but this is something a little bit different. I like it. Um, both of the crowns are screwed in. You get 300 meters of water resistance with this watch. You also get a lot of loom on the dial, at least uh, from what I have seen so far. So you get really nicely loomed hands, and then the indices which are applied are completely filled with loom. Um, so we will do a loom shot at the end to uh, check that out. Let's do some measurements. Now this is a 43 millimeter watch. Um, there are no crown guards, so it does wear like a 43 millimeter integrated bracelet watch. So depending on where you're actually measuring it, it measures around 43.5, 43.4 is what I've seen, uh, just around there. So uh, that's basically it. And at the bezel, it's sloping. It's basically the exact same size. Then the uh, lug width. Now the lug width at the case is, I believe, around 52 millimeters or somewhere or somewhere around there. However, uh, since you have male end links on here, and as you can see, they uh, go right into the uh, rubber strap. Uh, you do get a larger uh, lug span, and that's about 58.3 or somewhere around there, depending on uh, where you're actually measuring it on the actual strap, so 58.5. Uh, thickness on here is around 14 millimeters. You do get 300 meters of water resistance. You do have an automatic movement inside. It is a Seiko NH35, so uh, the Seiko NH35, not the thinnest movement on earth. However, it's not an extremely thick watch at 14 millimeters, considering that you have an NH35 inside and considering that you get 300 meters of water resistance. Now, the, both the crowns are exactly the same, uh, very nicely sized at 6.4 millimeters. They are very grippy. They have sort of a cross grain on them. They really are nice. And then you have a little wave pattern on both of them. Screwed in case back, and that screwed in case back is just uh, like a little water scene. It's a uh, diver sort of swimming by. I'll do a close up of it. Just gives you information on the watch, of course, and there's some seaweed and a fish. Uh, looks pretty cool. It's just etched into the case back. Uh, the case back is all polished. The case uh, itself on the back side of the case is in all brushed or bead blasted, uh, depending on which angle you're looking at it from. And then the side is all brushed, the side of the case. And then you have a very thick chamfered edge at the bottom. And at the top, the uh, top is polished and the bottom is sort of bead blasted. Uh, really nice. And then, of course, the bezel on D1 Milano is always the same. Uh, you have a vertical brushing and then around the actual bezel on these sort of little 
depressions. They are either uh, bead blasted or polished. So looks really good. Obviously an homage to a few different watches, the Royal Oak, and of course the Patek Philippe Nautilus uh, come to mind. However, uh, definitely looks its own watch as well. I think they do a really good job. This is sort of their look now, um, and they're actually being copied. There are a few brands that have sort of copied their look as well, which is kind of ironic. Really beautiful watch. I really love the dial and all the colors that they, this is the Lido colorway, I believe. It's not the blue dial. There is a blue dial, which is completely different from this. It gets a black chapter ring, um, and the dial is black. This is sort of, uh, excuse me, the blue dial is a uh, black chapter ring and a blue dial, which is sort of a sunburst dial. This is different. Uh, this gets a very, very cool um, blue-gray dial, which I really like. Uh, the strap on here, again, in keeping with that gray-blue uh, theme, is in a gray-blue color. Um, you have uh, D1 Milano, and then there's just a wave pattern on the bottom. Uh, the only thing that I think this watch is let down by is the clasp. Now, you only get three adjustments here, three uh, micro adjustments, which I think is not enough for a dive watch. I think you should have a couple of more. You know, it's your typical clasp for a uh, micro brand. Uh, however, I just wish there was at least four or five positions of micro adjust in the bracelet. Um, and then also the strap needs to be cut to be sized. So that's why uh, having a little bit extra micro adjust would be really nice uh, so that if you cut your bracelet, you can cut it down uh, so that you're not using the micro adjust. And then if you do expand, you can use some of the micro adjust, things like that. I think that works a lot better. Uh, the dial is really nicely set up. It's just says D1 Milano there at the top. And then uh, just a wave pattern. The name of the watch, which is Sub Aquio, I believe is the way you say it. But I'm not sure if I'm actually saying that right. So I'm not going to attempt to say it again. Uh, just below that little wave pattern. That's it. Um, so really nicely done. Very substantial watch in your hands. Uh, let me throw it on my wrist so you guys can see. We'll talk about price. Uh, and then we'll do a loom shot because the loom, like I said, pretty decent on this watch. Very quickly, today I am wearing another integrated bracelet dive watch. This is a lot thicker than the uh, D1 Milano. This is my AP Royal Oak Offshore Diver. Um, and this is, or I think it's just the uh, Royal Oak Diver. It's not the Offshore, but either way, it doesn't make a difference. Um, it is a 300 meter dive watch. It has the crown at the three o'clock position, the rotating inner bezel at the 10 o'clock position. Uh, so like I was just saying before, I do like that. Not, uh, not bad, but you can see it is much thicker than that D1 Milano. Uh, let's look at the bezel really quickly. The bezel action on here is very smooth, as you can see, um, and it is a rotating inner bezel. There is no clicking, so it is very easy to have this line up perfectly with um, your with your uh, 12 o'clock indice. So that works really, really well. I have a seven and a half inch wrist. This is a 43 and change millimeter watch. I have not sized the strap to my wrist. However, you can see, it wears very nicely on my wrist, very similar to the AP Royal Oak uh, Diver. Obviously, you're getting that crown there at the the um, uh, uh, the four o'clock position, so it does not dig into your wrist, which is a big problem with that AP Royal Oak. This actually wears smaller than that watch because there is no crown guards either. Um, so. Uh, actually, I do think this will wear a little bit nicer than that watch. Um, it is very substantial nonetheless. So you can see it is a pretty substantial watch uh, on wrist. So they are charging $565 for this watch. And I have to say, I think that's a pretty good price considering you're getting a 300 meter automatic watch. It has an NH35, which is great, but it's also an integrated bracelet watch. And I believe that they will make a bracelet for this eventually that you could probably purchase. Um, which would be awesome. I think that would be the way to go with this watch on a bracelet. I always get my watches on a bracelet, but even though this doesn't come on a bracelet, this is a really nicely made watch for $565. Um, and it's a watch that you can definitely get wet. You can go swimming with this. You can go diving with this. You could do anything you want with this. Uh, a really good everyday watch on the bigger side because it's 43 millimeters, but like I said, really good looking and very well made. Um, and it fits very nicely on my wrist, and I have a seven and a half inch wrist. Anyway, uh, very quickly, let's do a quick loom shot and then wrap up the video. 
So there you have it. What is loomed is liberally applied with loom. However, they did not loom the chapter ring or the, um, the actual inner rotating bezel. I wish they did because I think that would look really good on this watch. It would add a little bit more brightness into the uh, dial itself, but they did uh, you know, liberally apply the indices with loom and the hands. It looks really good, um, but a little bit more, always welcome, as I always say. And of course, I like to have a loom bezel, so uh, that is me. The only things I would change on this watch is probably the clasp, because if you give us more micro adjust in the clasp, then uh, having a, uh, a strap that you need to cut to fit uh, would be fine. Otherwise, give us a strap that is not needed to be cut to actually fit to your wrist. So um, th that's just one thing you need to actually uh, keep in mind. Now, a lot of watches do that. I have a very expensive watch. I have a, a Roger Dubuis uh, Easy Diver. That needs to be cut to fit. And then of course, uh, the uh, bracelet, the uh, clasp on it has actually no micro adjust whatsoever. So, you know, you're getting three positions here. I think you need at least four or five positions uh, if you want us to cut the strap. So. Uh, that's just my opinion because then you can get a really good fit uh, and then use that micro adjust to adjust it during throughout the year when you're wearing this during different weather. Anyway, tell me what you guys think in the comments below. 565 I think is a really good price because you're getting a very versatile watch, integrated bracelet, dive watch, which is not a common watch that you find every day. I think that's really cool. Um, just a good looking watch as well. I really like the colors that they used here, this gray blue theme works really well. Anyway, tell me what you guys think in the comments below. I wanna hear from you guys. Please also don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell icon. It is super helpful for the channel and I very much appreciate it. Please follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is watchchrisblog. I have some links in the description. Those links are to Amazon. If you click those links and buy anything, it helps support the channel. It doesn't cost you anything extra. However, I very much appreciate it. Anyway, thank you for logging on. I'll catch you guys in the next video.